I think the biggest problem is already these expressions, you know, net, uh, uh, net payers, net con uh, contributors, net recipients. This already shows that uh, member countries look at the budget just as a financing means for their home constituencies. And, and I mean, there are big uh, transfer budgets in it. Uh, you have two thirds which go to agricultural spending and cohesion spending of the member states. So governments really fight for this money, so they want to get out of it as much as possible. And this is a tragedy, because a truly European perspective would ask, which are the big European challenges? This is not necessarily the money flowing back in my home country. Based on what you just said, what are the risks that the EU leaders are actually mishandling these negotiations and fostering populism back home? Yeah, I mean, there's a risk uh, popul for populism on both sides, on the, on the side of the richer countries. The risk is that uh, voters might think this is an unfair treatment, we pay too much. On the side you know, of the poorer countries, of the agricultural countries, the risk is that they say we don't receive sufficient money, there's not sufficient solidarity. I think the way out of, of this uh, problem is that you look for European added value. So spending, which really is the interest both of the rich and the poor countries, both of the agricultural and non-agricultural countries, where you really address European challenges. This is the way out. When we look at the latest proposal from the Council, and this is the number that the leaders will be looking at later today, uh, the President Charles Michel proposes 1.074% of GNI going forward. Do you think this is enough to make the EU more competitive? I think it would be enough. Uh, it's not so much about how much Europe spends, but how it spends. Uh, so far, the spending is very old-fashioned. We spend a lot of money for the policies of the last century, but, but we don't spend sufficient money for climate, for migration, for defense, so truly European tasks. No? So we, I think under this uh, ceiling uh, suggested by the presidency, when you have a, a courageous shift of money between, from the old-fashioned policies to the new policies, you really would create a lot of European added value. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersetti and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.